Hello folks and welcome to Dusty Tracks BC. Uh, we're so lucky to be here today in Marie-Christine Clevo's studio. I totally fumbled over your name, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I even practiced. You did pretty good. <laughs> I was trying so hard. Thank you for having us in your studio today. Oh, you're welcome. That's nice to have you. Oh man, it's so magical to be here <laughs> seeing all of your work and all of your paint. You can't, I don't think anyone can see it on camera, but there's just paint everywhere, but in like a... It's not a, it's, it's a happy paint everywhere. It's, you have the resources everywhere. You don't have a mess everywhere. It's lovely to see. How's your day been so far? Oh yeah, it's great. I mean, we're so lucky to have so much sun these days and in Paris and Rosswood, well, here in Rosswood anyway. Yeah, when we can see the mountains, we're all pretty happy around here. Yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> the view out your window is <laughs> yeah. amazing. Um, what kind of art do you make? Huh, well, um, Right now I focus mainly on acrylic paintings, uh, a little bit of gouache because it's such a, a nice medium to bring on the road. But uh, yeah, the acrylic paintings are what I've been focusing on for, I don't know, probably 25 years. And of course I do other things. I'd like to think that my garden is a piece of art and... and uh, I would second that after yeah. the tour you gave us today. <laughs> I'm on board for that belief. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like to be creating and making things with with what's available to me. So, well, that's amazing. What uh, do you love about the acrylic? Why why pick acrylics? Hmm. Yeah, I think I I decided acrylic was the medium of choice probably twenty two years ago because it was it, it would dry so fast mm. and uh because like i started with oil like most people back in the days mm -hmm. and uh oil was just it would dry really slow there was a lot of like different oil and medium you needed to like clean your paint brushes and it was just like very messy and smelly and and uh it sounds like I'm dragging oil down, but I'm not. I actually admire people that that are good at it now, and and I'm actually curious about going back. But why I'm doing acrylic right now is because acrylic was just yeah so easy, so fast. It was um, it was also a little bit more affordable, and um, yeah, easy to use. So I, I just loved it. Mm -hmm can see why. <laughs> <laughs> um, will you walk me through a little bit of how it is you put a painting together? So like this painting behind mm. us. Yeah. So this is actually uh, Chateau Galais. So it's near where I'm from in Quebec. Ah, okay. And uh, I was there. Well, I go, I go back like once or twice a year and we drive near that place every time. And actually last time I got to go and have a little walk. And, and I just like the angle that you get when when you're on the trail because like you feel like the water is going away from you. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really interesting because like most, well, most of my paintings of waterfalls and most paintings of waterfalls, you see it like straight on, like a portrait mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. But this one, I felt like you were in the scene. So like a, a few years ago, I did a smaller version of that first mm -hmm. and um, I had a show in Quebec in Mont Saint Jean a few, uh, last year or yeah last year and um, it sold and I just I, you know <laughs> when I start but I have a I have a general idea and 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 there's a lot of principle that I apply but really I'm, I'm always surprised at the end anyway like this one I just wanted to like years mm -hmm. ago and now like where where I am you know a few years later yeah Mm -hmm. Do you find your painting style has changed and developed over the years? Oh yeah, like th there are similarities and there is evolution, I would say, but there is major shifts, shifts mm -hmm. that happens too. And I think I think I am in one right now, actually. Mm. Uh, yeah, because if you if you look at my work right now, it's way more geometric and and nature. Mm -hmm. would be or being a sense of being in the place and and uh, well, win against mother nature because like seriously <laughs> no but like you can't reproduce you can't reproduce 
you know, nature. Yeah. Well, yeah, some people can actually, but some that, people that's are not very me. talented. Yeah, <laughs> but that, yeah, but you, and, and talent or like style or like mm. you know, like aesthetic or something too. Mm -hmm. Like it's not for me. Like I'm not. I don't want to do a picture. I don't want to sit there and do a picture, right? Mm -hmm. I want it like more like an impression of of yeah. the place as well. And and to tell you the truth, I don't always control what comes you know yeah. and then like when i'm outside it hands a bit different and then yeah yeah oh wow Lud, can you pan one of the cameras so that people can see the the painting behind marie christine um i don't know just for this one in particular will you walk me through kind of like did you start with one solid color and mm. then add layers how did the layers come to be on this yeah so uh, this one i started a little bit different than most of my paintings because most of my paintings i do um gradation in the sky mm. and usually yeah. like i do like a lot of layers it's a lot of layers with very active big paint brushes and and a little bit of wet like I know a lot of people frown up on like putting water in your acrylic paint but I put a little bit of water in my acrylic paint and with a very energetic brush stroke I melt all that down and then like mm. layers upon layers it just works itself yeah and then usually I start on top of that and then I start adding like you know the mountains or whatever I, it is that I want with this one the background is not present as much, right? So I very much started with uh, drawing the shape I wanted because like I told you, that's what I was curious about. Yeah. yeah. So I drew that and then I did a, a, a wash with, ah, you might even see some of the wash left, some red, some red wash, which I never do, but a lot of people, a lot of artists love to work this way. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll try it too. And uh, yeah, just worked from there. What did the red wa wash bring to it? I think it gives you, well, first of all, some people say that it makes like the yellow pop or like mm. the blue. You don't have a blank white canvas in front of you anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? Like the first stroke or like the being shy about the first stroke or like, yeah, so it's, I, th I think that's what it is. That makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, the like gradients that you would usually do. Uh, yeah, those are like true, like the sunlight. You'll see that like you don't see any sunlight because there's a <laughs> lot of paint on here. Yeah, I, and yeah. no brush strokes, right? Like that's my idea. Well, actually, this one. So this one's been in the studio. Colors on it. Oh wow. So this one was this side. That you see, like ah, at one point. Yeah, so yeah. like here, you see a little brush stroke and like. That bugs me. That bugs you. Will you show the camera here? <laughs> I don't know if they'll be able to see. But no, probably not. Yeah. yeah probably, nobody, but it bothers you to see brush strokes. Yeah, nobody would notice uh, but me probably. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. that. There's certain little lighting things and camera things mm -hmm. that I'm like, I'm going to die. That looks so bad. I can't handle yeah. it. And I'm like, look at that. And someone else is like, what are you talking you about? Nitpick your, your work, right? I've been, um, so I've been working with mentors, a few mentors in the last few years and and it's very good because like you know like people that are just a bit more seasoned than yours or that see your style for what it mm. is and then tell you like well you might not need to do what you think you need, you know you, you do and and one of them them is uh, Brent Lynch and he said something like um so a painting you need to like cap a, a painting needs to capture your interest from 70 feet away you know, like when you walk into like a oh, gallery, wow. you need to be able to say like, oh, wow, like, okay, that's, that what is that? interesting. It, yeah. And then at 50 feet, you should be like, oh, wow, like that even more. At 30 feet, you should be able to see the skill of the artist and mm. to understand what it is about. And then like at three feet, nobody goes this close. If you get three feet in front of an art piece and you still love it that's yours forever right because like i mean that's only the artist that's the artist's space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah wow i've never thought of it like that because it's true. i'm not sure he said all those words but uh, that's what i get <laughs> i am there and you go in and... from far away and then like another person said something like uh you know our art piece should make sense when you walk to the bathroom at night you should still be able to 
like it mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like so i have that high contrast that's still interesting in like a poor light was meaning so i think i'm gonna live forever so how does that make you feel to know what you're creating will go through all these different environments like do you factor that into it yes and no like i mean when i paint i don't necessarily think about that unless it's a commission and like mm. like i have had like discussions with the client and then like I you know I got to know a little bit what they want and all that well then that's that's on my mind but like I find no offense but the best paintings are the ones that are just made by me for me mm. and then with no purpose do you know what I mean like no like I, yeah. I don't I, I don't know where they're gonna go. I don't have a big show planned or some sort of like pressure, and then I can just go for it. And and I just wish that somebody's gonna like love it someday, you know. But it doesn't matter because I needed to get it out probably. So just lucky that often people like. That. <laughs> yeah. When we were coming to see you, our friend was like, "Check if she has any pieces for sale." I love her work. <laughs> Yeah, your, your work seems to be very loved throughout the terrace community, so it's cool to see. Well, I was in Squamish and established a little bit there, and then I lived in Rosslyn, BC, and I established there as well. And then moving here, and, and every time you move, it needs a few years for the community to accept who you are as an artist and to get to know you, and you get to know them, and, and also to like know the place a little bit and to, mm -hmm. to be able to like have a a fair representation of the place hmm. and its people, may, maybe yeah. too, because like actually when I lived in Rosslyn, I painted a lot of things like that because that's very much like what I was. So it, yeah, just a little bit of a challenging time, right? Like moving up here, re here, and there was a couple different art gallery, but it was of course like the Frida Diesling School of Art, which is like amazing up up here but like it felt like there wasn't like that much support for artists mm. and then like everything was very challenging like mm. shipping is challenging from up here like getting canvases and now we have yeah. like a, a great art supply store here and then we have like more support through the terrace art gallery and then like there's just there's just the community has been like building on and on and it's just it is it's great I think like we have a great vibrant art community here mm -hmm. it wasn't always the case in, in my opinion but yeah it's it's been developing and it's been great mm -hmm. yeah that must have been very cool to see that change and shift do you feel like you had a part in it like what, what was it like being part of that shift uh maybe a maybe a small part like everybody else right yeah like i was the the curator at the art gallery for many years and and just trying to like advocate for more just a small little change, you know, like bringing in like uh, different ways of, of curating the art gallery, smaller exhibition or or the art at YXT, like that was like a bit of an extension and a beautiful space for artists to be able to showcase their work with with maybe people that like a traffic, a different traffic too, mm -hmm. right? Like, because it's yeah. not necessarily people that would go out of their way to go to the art gallery it's like people that are just getting in and then they get right away they get a sense of the place and it, it's people and I think I think that's pretty cool and then we have like a lot of uh, banners in town and there's a lot of well murals and sculpture and yeah so it's it's been good I think and it's just getting easier yeah good to hear mm -hmm. I think every Every place is developed by art. It just brings so much to any community. Oh, absolutely. Like, and I mean, that that's my little piece of the world, but I know that like, so here we're like in, in Rosswood, we're on on uh, Kitsum Kalem territory, but we're on the Nishka highway. So I know like the, the Nishkas have had like a vibrant culture, like since like f forever. And I think what's great with like the Frida Diesling and then like the art gallery and and the murals and all that is like, it's just like now we're able to like celebrate those cultures like more like together, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. There's so much 
there's so much art up here. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And like North, some Northwest coast art that's like really based in place is some of the most popular in the world. Like it's, it's wild. Some of the Frida Dizing work, how far it goes. Um, how did you find your work? Your artwork is impacted by living in these different places. Did it change as you moved? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I think I've always had like the big, bold uh, shapes mm -hmm. in my work a little bit. Like that was even when I was painting in Quebec, I was highly influenced by um, artists like Andre Vezina, which unfortunately she's not very well known, but like look her up. <laughs> and we'll look her yeah. up. She had like beautiful uh, market scenes, like, you know, oh. like the Montreal markets yeah, yeah. and then like, uh, she had that black outline uh, around all of her characters and like the way she she painted back in the 80s right like with like lots of paint and just vibrant colors so it just attracted me a lot and um I think that's where I got the black line has disappeared a little bit but that's where I got like a lot of like the bold shapes and like outlines mm. and and then it just like I said, it just evolved. I think when I lived in my van, I was, uh, I had a bird phase. <laughs> I was painting a lot of birds, like birds with hats or birds with shoes or yeah, like just a very silly little face there. And then um, in Rosslyn, it was uh, a lot of, yeah, musician. Musician or people that are doing something they're good at. Mm. like uh gardeners or like a potter or like getting that kind of concentration yeah. and focus in them yeah that love for what they're doing mm -hmm. and I was I was working seasonal back then mm. so I would I had a art studio in my house as well so I would plant trees in the summer and then like paint through paint, the winter paint through the winter so it was very good and then when we moved here it's a bit different because we had well we built a house, raised a daughter, and uh, was uh, working full-time, well, forestry, mm. like seasonal, but almost full-time then too. So it's just, you know, the art was, took a little bit of a back burner, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make myself busy. But yeah, the last 10 years I've been, I've been pretty much doing this full-time. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. What do you love about painting? Hmm. the possibilities mm. it's you can whatever you want there's no limit really I mean there's you're the person that puts the limit right and you've seen you've seen the art of Dali or you've seen the art of Picasso and I'm just naming the big the names big that, that everybody people knows. knows right but like I mean it's it's amazing to see where each and every individual takes it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating. And now that I know that those people are probably not in full control either, that's even more fascinating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> yeah, there must be a lot of artists out there that have a similar sense of view of just like, they know what they're going for, but they're so deeply connected to the work that there's almost an unknown of how it's going to come out. Yeah, the best, yes. the best part, wow, what happened? And then you look at it like if it's the first time you see it too, even though you're the person that just did it. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds a little crazy. Oh, I have no concept <laughs> of time when I'm painting. <laughs> and I don't have the, it's not my world in the way it is yours. Like I could only imagine how, how deep into it you must get. It doesn't sound crazy at all. <laughs> engaged, fully engaged. I wish for everybody to get there one day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a magical feeling. Not necessarily painting. You can be fully engaged doing anything, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But finding that thing that kind of mm -hmm. makes you tick. Spark. Yeah. Have you always made art? Did you do make art growing up? Is it? Yep, I think so. Yeah. You know, it's like people say, you just do it and never stop, right? Yeah. Do you think everyone should be making art? Absolutely. And even if you're not or you think you're not good at it or you don't like it, you, then you don't have to do the thing you didn't like. But keep on being curious. I think being mm. curious is the thing, right? Like you don't have to make art, but as long as you're curious 
and you keep on like making things, whatever it is, right? You know what I mean? Completely. Yeah. Because what's the point? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Being curious is what makes life fun, I think. I think so, so too. Everybody, everybody's got a bit of a gift, right? Just got to figure out what it is and then... little hair right mm -hmm. and then like a lot of artists they go and they paint like little <laughs> dabs like that mm -hmm. well that's not how I do it <laughs> I go with like so I'll just use the white here because it's kind of where I am so I get my paint to like a, a kind of like buttery consistency by adding a little bit of water and then when it's like the way I like it. I really so the important part here is that you saw uh, all the air covered like the white area and mm -hmm. then this is the sharp edge right mm -hmm. so that sharp edge is your that's basically what needs to be good the rest is not as important so like we were hunter and gatherer right mm -hmm. like that's kind of like our evolution mm -hmm. so like we're trained like our eyes are trained to see contrast mm -hmm. like that's that's kind of like how our brain is wired mm -hmm. it's like oh i don't know if your grandma was like that but my grandma always said like when you sweep the floor you do all the outside and if you do the outside well the middle will take care of itself Okay, well, that's kind of like the same thing. You got to mm. like do the edge, make sure that all the edge are good. And mm. then inside you can like... Make kind of it's a, not, it'll take care of itself. Yeah. It'll, make kind of it's a, not, it'll take care of itself. Yeah, it'll take care of itself. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not a big help, eh? <laughs> no, it's so cool. It's all magic. <laughs> it's, I believe it. I believe it. And it's seeing you do the magic. long, it makes more sense too with seeing you do the long brush strokes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so but, like this is one brush stroke. Oh wow. Yeah, and this is one brush stroke. So it's not, I'm not, so the background is energetic mm -hmm. with like a lot of movement and stuff. And then like when I start and I make like the drawing, mm -hmm. then it's like energetic and big brush stroke. But then at the end when you're, really want you like your last layer <laughs> that makes sense yeah and I'm kind of like right now I'm in the cleaning up stage here mm -hmm. and I'm still working on the energy of this waterfall down here so. it's amazing I completely see how you feel like you I feel like I'm on the edge of a waterfall I see it mm -hmm. so I'm hoping to like I don't like this here so I'm gonna mm. like work on yeah I, I went a bit too crazy but like I just really want to work on this ear and make it make this look like it's falling in so that's my when I get this in I think the rest is gonna take care of itself yeah that makes sense <laughs> is there anything you feel like people don't know about painters that you think they should know well if you are like a a painter a full-time painter you're more than a full-time painter mm yeah tell me how mm. you are your own shipping agent packaging agent you got to get all those supplies order watch for the sales because you know it's all expensive it's all expensive uh i just shipped a painting to phoenix and like the 
the going through custom and all of that is like complicated and then like uh, I sometimes I do corporate work so then like you have to write your own contract so you have to do research that goes behind yes. that contracts are and, hard <laughs> yeah exactly and then like um social everything it's yeah oh my gosh yeah it's a lot of work so the painting part is amazing and then I often push the office work a bit aside and then like, you know, I'll, okay, Monday morning, all right, okay, let's do office work for like four or five hours. And yeah, and I'm not, I'm not half as good as I should to be maintaining my social media and mm. entertaining people that way. I'm good at answering my emails, but <laughs> yeah. it's hard there's so yeah. to be one small business and especially an artistic uh artistic one of that mm -hmm. there's so many pieces that go into it like i have it easier as like a like a cinematographer and like working in film it's easier because we have there's just like almost more resources there's like i'm one part of an overall crew to make a film but even that like being a sole business of like doing my own taxes like figuring out the contracts how to that it, Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> so many different pieces. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's years. Years of, you know, looking into it and just getting better. And, and I have a, a bit of a support system right now, which helps. Um, I, I found a group a few years back of artists and we meet online and they are a huge support, actually. And we just, because they probably have an, a, an idea about, you know, a little challenge that I have, or they've seen that before, or they're creative too. So they, mm. it's nice sometimes to say like, well, this happened to me. And they're like, oh, no way. <laughs> That's <laughs> Because, cool. you know, not everybody's interested about all the little things. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to have your group that gets the same problems. Yeah, exactly. It's a that's very, cool. it can be a very lonely thing, right? Mm. Like, that's why sometimes I like to work with other artists too, like if I can, but I mean, it's nice to have, at least that online sport and then wish and hope to meet them <laughs> in person especially that like they're like in hawaii fiji like oh, no, no, yeah seriously yeah oh, i'm wow. like i want to go to your house <laughs> yeah i think i think that's a business right off at that point yeah, yeah exactly. going to fiji totally that's a <laughs> and they all want to come here because i mean of course why not yeah okay? Yeah. Who would, like, there's a reason we drove out to see you today. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's very beautiful. This place would be national park if it was anywhere near a big, big city. Yeah. That's true. And I mean, but you are good. just... We're going to keep yeah. it secret. <laughs> you are just south of a huge historical park. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, the, 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 the lava bed is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. 